all you fine folks. So good to see you guys. And uh, we're back for some more Q&A. And you know what's really, really cool and exciting for me? Is seeing the questions get better over time. I see people, you know, how can I just get a client to, like, how can I manage a client to, how can I bring in teams, how can I grow this thing, how can I scale this thing, how can I deliver my product, how can I more refine it. Things just get better and better as we go, so I'm really, really proud of you guys. Just a couple quick announcements before we get rock and rolling. Announcement number one. For those of you guys who are using Go High Level or thinking of using it, we got a bunch of awesome templates to help you onboard, to help you close clients without phone calls, to help you deliver your leads without phone calls. So if you're interested in that, reach out, um, and I'll send you some details on that. And as well, I just want to give a quick announcement. We do have a few tiny spots left in the Mastermind. I'm super selective about who gets into there. Um, I think I might have two or three left. I have to check to be sure. Um, but when those are gone, those are gone, and then we'll have a waiting list. And, and it'll be ideal for you guys if you're between fifteen and fif- or five and fifteen clients and looking to scale without the meetings and sell without phone calls and just generally make your agency easier, bring in teams and systems, processes, so you don't have to do everything. Get to hang out on the beach. So other than that, let's get into the questions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Fraggy Finn proudly brings to you our weekly (laughs) Q&A. That's an homage to to 1990s wrestling. What's up, Cole? Good to see you, brother. Uh, Let's see what we got here. So Joe says, any suggestions for hosting for about 20 WordPress sites? Joe, uh, I'll tell you real quickly, uh, a lot of people I know use SiteGround. I don't. I use, uh, what's the name of the one I use? I forget the name of the one, the host I use. So that's, I guess I'm a bad person to ask. But I'll tell you what, what I like to do is I like to just Google Reddit best hosting platform. And then I read like things that get upvoted. Usually you can, you can trust a community for that kind of thing. Um, that's my go-to tool for like sorting through any software or tools or anything like that. So um, SiteGround hosting. Um, Zachary says, anyone have a good te- template for ads, KPI reporting to send to clients for the end of the week? Looking to spice up my perspective. Much appreciated, Zach. All right, here's the deal, okay, with reporting. I, I'm really opinionated about reporting, and I'll tell you why, okay? So in my SEO agency for seven years, uh, I made various reports, and I'll give you the evolution. I started with these custom reports where I showed them all their keywords, how they're ranking, how it's doing, and it would take me like an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hours, each report to make this custom report, but it showed them without any doubt how their SEO was doing. And people thought, cool, and they didn't even really read them. And then after years, I found some tools that automated, and they would make graphs and charts, and they would show people kind of the same basic information. Here's your keywords, here's how they're progressing. And I'll tell you, all I ever got from clients was was saying, uh, well, that's nice, but what does all this fancy stuff mean? Like, I don't understand this. Like, and so to them, it was just like sending hieroglyphs. And so I went through this evolution of like being really annoyed that I would do all this awesome work for clients and then they didn't understand my reports. And one day, a client just said, can you tell me like how it's going? And so I fired up that in those days, it was a recording tool called Jing. I fired it up, I fired up Jing, and I said, well, here's here's what we're doing, here's why we're doing it, and here's how it's going. That was my template. What we're doing, why we're doing it, and how it's going, and like kind of like what's next, like resetting those expectations. And they loved it, and they gave me like this thank you. And so I, I decided to try it on another client, and they loved it. And so I have personally switched out. I've tried every fucking reporting tool on the face of the earth, and nothing beats just a two-minute video. I call them Frankie's Drive-By Updates. My clients love my, my drive-by updates, and they're just, here's what we're doing, Here's why we're doing it. Here's how it's going. And here's what we intend to do next. And you just give them the raw truth in like two, three minutes, really, really straightforward and to the point. And usually I'll fire up those KPIs. I will point to them. I will explain to them in plain English what these numbers mean and why they're watching them. And that is the best reporting tool I've ever built. Now, I'll give you another pro tip. I do these every second Friday and I do them all back to back. So it takes me like an hour to two hours to do all our clients. Just rapid fire. Ding, 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 ding. And then that's it. Two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, send, 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 send. And now I updated every client. And my entire week's worth of meetings is condensed into like one little, two little hours. So that's my pro tip on how we manage that. Uh, Locky asks, I'm on the lookout for an appointment center on base salary or base hourly plus commission for each successful appointment. If someone can do the setting and closing, we're laughing two birds, one stone, small agency, any recommendations 
are welcome on how I should go about my progress. Cheers, Lucky. I'll tell you, two biggest things that'll make a difference in your outreach, who you message, what you offer them. So before I bring in an appointment setter, I make sure to have those two things dialed in. Very, very clear about who I'm offering. I'll give you a big secret. I only, I only send messages to people who are currently spending money. I don't chase broke people. I want to know that they've got a budget, and the easiest way to know they've got a budget is if they're using it right now. So there's secret number one. Secret number two, you have an offer. Um, where most people get the offer wrong is usually the biggest version of it is they just have like a big marriagey, hard to say yes to thing. Like think about having a smaller condensed version of what you do. So if you're doing like SEO and it takes you 12 months to rank their website, instead of offering them like, hey, let's do SEO, just give them one keyword or maybe help them optimize their, their listing or fix something on their page. But don't offer them like the whole goddamn gamut because it's, it's hard to say yes to. So whatever you can do to move the needle the quickest, that's where I usually recommend starting and then offer them that. And what you'll find is most agency appointment setters can succeed if you have those two things, most of them, like literally like 90, 95% of them. So if you nail those two things, you'll make it very easy for an agency appointment. Where most people screw it up is they're, they're hoping somebody can take all that work off their plate. And usually you're not going to find that in a virtual assistance. I mean, you may, like, I'm not saying it's impossible. You may like strike gold and find somebody who just takes all that work. But usually if they know how to prospect and get appointments themselves and write messaging and create offers, then they don't need you. So usually you got to give them a framework to succeed. And the best thing you can do is nail those two pieces. August says, anyone have experience building a successful sales team? I'm struggling to get mine off the ground and would really appreciate some pointers. August, just so you know, I struggled with this too for years. I actually almost bankrupted an agency because, so it was reaching a point where our lawyer agency was first scaling. I brought in salespeople. I had tried a whole bunch of sales. I might have, I shouldn't say a whole bunch, but I probably tried about a dozen different salespeople and couldn't fucking close. And, and I had worked out all my numbers in my agency for the closing numbers being okay because I was doing the closing, it was working. And then I would bring people in and they wouldn't. And they would have nice conversations and people liked them. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't translate to sales. And removing myself is a really hard thing to do. So I'll tell you, if you're going to build salespeople, the, the, the best thing you can do is just give them five or 10 calls and see how they perform. And you'll know, learn more for those five or 10 calls and understand salespeople are going to have ups and downs. Now I'll tell you, our agency has evolved away from sales teams altogether. And what we do now is we just close and chat. And so when somebody says, Hey, I'm interested in your service. Can you tell me a little bit more? We just send them a video. The video does the sale, the selling. And then usually they may have like one question or they're even just ready to go. And usually the question, by the way, is just like, hey, here's my situation. Will it work for me in my practice area kind of thing? And so we just say yes or no. And then would you like to get started? And they like to get started. And that's the whole thing. So I found the reason why I love doing that. Another thing nobody will tell you about salespeople is they're humans. And what that means with humans is humans have up days. And humans have down days. So I've had my salespeople and they close like 10 in a row. They're like, high five, like I'm the best salesperson in a row. And then when they, when they go 0 for 8, like they, they practically have the suicide note written out. Like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong and blah, blah, blah. When you close through videos and chat, say Salman, uh, when you close through video and chat, you don't have those problems because video never takes a day off. So it's, it's actually a much more efficient system. So I would suggest like really nailing your offer to the point where you can sell it in a video without needing a sales conversation. And, uh, but having said that, if you're going to bring salespeople, the best thing to do, just give them five or 10 calls and you'll learn more about those five or 10 calls. And I'll tell you what I'm looking for in those things. I'm looking for two main things. I'm looking for thing. Number one, obviously the most obvious thing is can the salesperson close? Because if they don't actually close sales, then you're not going to need them for very, very long. But thing number two, and this is the thing that nobody thinks about, is what expectations do they set going through? Because I've had salespeople that made sales, but will literally fucking promise anything and everything to a client that can't actually be fulfilled in reality. Like, we're going to get you hundreds of fucking leads by to tonight. And then, of course, the client just ends up disappointed because you can't do that. So I'm also looking for salespeople that can sell the truth that like what we really, really deliver because there's some salespeople that'll say anything to do with sale, but they, they end up screwing up all the client relationship after the fact. What's up, Brian? Man, you guys, it's cool to have you guys here. Um, 
so be very, very careful with salespeople that are like, they'll stretch the truth to the point of, of you'll end up with just pissed off clients. So those are the two things I'm looking for when I build a sales team. And if you're interested, by the way, in building a sales team that's done entirely through video and chat, meaning no sales calls at all, then we should talk. Um, Eduardo, hello everyone. So we started sending out cold messages to some prospects. I'm not sure the numbers are good. So what we've been doing, search for and look for what can be improved. We send them a quick message on WhatsApp, the most common used message app in Brazil, letting them know how to do it if in doubt. Our message is something like the following. I just found your profile on Google. It is missing photos, posts, updates, reviews. They are all, all important to bring you more clients. You can do it yourself. And if you need any help in doing so, I can record a free video for you. Have a great day. Our numbers for a couple of days running it, total of messages 45, raised hands for the video six, not interested three, waiting response 36. What can we do to improve the numbers? Thank you for any insights, Eduardo. This is something I'm going to be going on actually very, very um, in more detail on our mastermind call this week. But I'll tell you, you have to understand that a big part of your solution is actually pinning it around a present day problem and something that uh, w would like to be built for these, uh, I think you said physical therapy clinics. Um, let me just double check that real quick. Do, 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 do. Okay, I lost. Yeah, physical therapy clinics. Um, so here's the deal with the, the, the physical therapy clinics, okay? I want you just to imagine if you run a physical therapy clinic, how much of the day is spent thinking about your Google My Business listing? And I'm going to bet the answer is very, very, very little. Now, it's an important part of what they're actually doing. I'll tell you things that they do think about. They think about their cash flow. They think about their employees. They think about their competitors. I'll tell you, that's actually a cheat code, by the way, for local businesses. If you work with local businesses, they all know their competitors by name, and they hate them universally. They're like lawyers will all say in my niche, they'll say, oh, that fucking guy gets all the cases and I'm way better lawyer than him. He is. He doesn't try cases. In physical therapy, they're having that same kind of conversation. So one thing that will make your message more powerful, just including it, is saying, hey, I was looking at your listing and I saw a name who is above them. And I wanted to show you why you're behind them and how you could get in front of you know all the business that they're getting that you that really should be yours. Would you be interested in hearing more about it? Because they're interested in beating their competition. They're interested in solving cash flow issues. Uh, and I don't necessarily know what those are. So you got to do a little bit of a deeper dive into physical therapy. And the best thing to do is I just Google like what's the hardest part about um, running a physical therapy clinic or I join some groups where they're having discussions and I read their comments and things like that. So you can do this like with relatively easy. There's a, vi a relative ease. There's a video I created on the YouTube channel. It's called the Unfair Sales Advantage. It's also in our group here if you just search it. I would take, it's like about 20 minutes long, but watch that video. It shows you how to find out what they're stuck on in their own words. And then you got to pin your solution around a present day problem. I've talked about this a lot, but what we do is a tool that does different things to different people. It's like a hammer, right? Like nobody buys a hammer because they want a hammer because it has a nice hand. They want to build a new kitchen. They want to build a birdhouse to make their daughter smile. They want to commit murder. Like there's things they want to do with the hammer. And so a Google My Business listing is just like a hammer. And if you understand what they're actually trying to build with the hammer, you'll have a, a whole much, uh, much easier time. I always say this, Cole used the analogy the other day um, about the plane ride, right? Like what we do is a plane ride. That's also another analogy for it is like nobody wants to buy a plane ride. And most agencies are talking about like I have nice seats and it's a beautiful plane. We got upgraded engines. Nobody cares about any of those things. They're, they're sick of the office that they want to get out of and they want to go away and they want to go to the beach. And so the more you sell the leaving the office and coming to the beach and the less you sell the journey, the easier it's going to be. So you got to figure out what they're trying to build with their My Business listings and that will automatically improve your things. But I'm going to tell you the, the three most likely places to look, cash flow, competition, and employees. Because I'll tell you, nothing sucks more than like for a business when they hire a bunch of people and those people are standing around doing nothing because they uh, don't have incoming leads and flow and almost always a Google My Business listing fixes that, right? So that uh, is an example of that. So it's hard to say without seeing your message, but I 
nobody really cares necessarily about their Google My Business listing. It's not a top of mind thing that they're thinking about. And the more you can talk talk about how you can solve a top of mind thing, the the, the faster they move to action. Kyle says. Hey guys, looking for your advice. We lost a big SEO client today because we have driven them too much business that they can no longer keep up. I know it's awesome to hear your services kill it for your clients, but this can be a big issue. I know this is a problem within the local lead gen space, so I'd love to hear how you tackle this. Kyle, my man, so sorry to hear that you're so awesome you got fired. <laughs> like for real, like what a world that we live in. Um, so... Here's the deal with uh, with getting fired. I mean, it, it sucks. I've had it happen to me. I've done it with SEO where they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like I'm so I'm inundated. Slow down, slow down, slow down, please. Um, the first thing is is there's there's always like a, a hidden silver lining in it. The hidden silver lining for you is now you got the coolest case study in the world. Like if you run a case study that says, here's how I got my client so much goddamn business that he can't even keep up, and he asked me to to turn off the ads and the phone calls and all this thing. I guess in your case, turn off the SEO. Um, more clients will want that. So the, there's a couple of things you can do in response to that. None of them are perfect, by the way. None of them are great things. And I've never really found a great solution to that. But one of those is you can just wait because they will come back. At some point, if you take your foot off the gas pedal, they will catch up on that delivery and then they'll need you again. Um, second thing you can do is what I've done as well is if you want to, you can help them because what here's the deal, right? Like their problem has now just switched from acquisition to fulfillment. And this happens in agencies too, by the way. When you get good at acquisition, suddenly you have fulfillment problems. Like it happens um, almost one to the other automatically. So if you, if you understand what they need usually with help and fulfillment is either people or systems. And so you can either find people who are good at those things or help them with those. And you can help them with the fulfillment side of things. And by the way, helping them with fulfillment is almost identical to the shit you're already doing. A lot of people say, oh, I don't know. I don't know how I would bring them good employees. You want to know how you bring them good employees? You write a good help wanted ad. That ad generates leads. You follow up with the leads quickly. You get them booked in for an appointment or a, a you know, like a hiring interview. We, 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 it's the equivalent of like a sales call. You screen the candidates and you bring a few in. That's how you bring on great employees. And most people write shitty ads. They don't follow up with people. It's no different when they're hiring, so you can help them with that. And so it makes a, a great deal of difference if you do that. And then the other thing, and I'll tell you, this is my, my personal favorite, is just to work with businesses that are higher up the pecking order that can handle it, right? Like I always say, um, if I'm dealing with like... A, uh, a single lawyer, I can probably drown that single lawyer in business in like a day, right? Like just running the, the stuff I've already got that's working. But if I get signed up with a 300 person law firm, it's going to take a lot of work to like really inundate them with so much work that they're like, okay, buddy, turn this thing off. And so it's my favorite thing just to go bigger, just go higher up the client ladder. And what you'll find is there are people who can handle that overflow and have those systems and have those processes and will value your SEO and pay you more for it, by the way, because uh, it's more valuable to fill a 300 person law firm than a single one, right? So it's like you could be doing the same service. I find in my niche, you might, you might be in the 500 to $2,000 range to sell SEO for one guy. The 300 person law firm, typically the SEO for them starts at ten dollars to $15,000 a month. And it's the same service, right? So um, it's a chance to go higher up the pecking order. That's what I would suggest for you. I'm just going to read a couple of comments here. Cole, I'm interested in video and chat, which flies in the face of every coach I've paid who says you need calls. Yes, I've heard that calls too. I got an awesome mentor uh, two, three years ago. His name's Travis Sago, and he's the master of closing without calls. And his simple philosophy is really like, the point of a call is to get to the end of a call to make an offer, and most people have hard to say yes to offers, which is why they need the calls. If you focus on making the offer easier to say yes to, it becomes uh, easier to say yes to. And it's the equivalent of like people say like they think sales is the solution to everything, but um, a good example of that is like imagine we had a $100 Amazon gift card, and I want to give you a choice. You can have like the best salesperson in the world, maybe like somebody like a Grant Cardone, selling these Amazon gift cards for a hundred bucks and I'm sure they would sell or you can have your grandma who has no sales experience but you can buy them for fifty dollars a piece 
and therefore you can sell them for like 60 or 70 or 80 or something like that. You can sell them at a discount. Gram, grandma's going to have an easy time selling that because the value is clear, right? Like I got this $100 Amazon gift card. You can verify it in whatever way you like. I'd like to sell it for 70. Grandma's not going to have a hard time selling that. Even though um, Grant's probably awesome, he's going to have a harder time selling that because other than the celebrity factor, who wants to pay 100 bucks for a $100 card, right? So a big part of that is just like when you disproportionately deliver on value. And there's a great book, by the way, that's come out recently. Alex Hermosi's $100 million offers is a must read. When you understand that, you're showing up to the table with like $10,000 worth of value metaphorically and asking only a thousand and it's it's just easy to say yes to and most people don't think about that um i got all the real world advice love it brian maybe not so much all the real world advice but i've definitely been in this agency space a while so uh, <laughs> 15 years or so uh, Solomon says, by the way, guys, today I saw a video of Alex from Ozzy's wife saying that she wouldn't start a marketing agency because every person in her mom owned an agency. She's based, so basically saying it's oversaturated. Definitely some truth to saturation, although I always feel like there's ways to stand out from the noise. Um, Nikki Two Angels, I've been reaching out to dentists for a couple weeks now. I know, I think it may be the offer I gave them, but I don't know if it is. I've been offering a demonstration campaign of handing out pamphlets to the patients they already have who they know can benefit from this procedure, stating a before and after image on the first page, what veneers are in the second and a third who can benefit. And I offer them this demonstration for a month to see if they get a veneer patient. Could you tell me if there's something wrong with this offer? Not necessarily wrong, Nikki Two Angels, my man. Here's, here's the deal is like, Markets, by the way, I nobody bats a hundred or like bats a thousand in making offers. Self included, by the way, I put shit out and nobody responds. Happens, I know, shocking, right? Like, so there's always a, an, an element of the offer. I'll tell you the thing that makes offers move and usually get it right is is when you're selling like a high ticket offer, it has to solve a real world problem. And I can tell you a couple of things about dentists. One, two things you're dealing with in dentists. One is that. Um, they are one of the most saturated niches on earth. So therefore, you're just going to have to work harder to get their attention than in other niches because like for real dentists are just bombarded. But they're also like you make more money with it. So it's kind of a, you know, uh, it's more work, but you, you, there's more benefit to reaching out to dentists, which is why people do it. Having said that, um, the other thing too is understanding why they would want your offer because then you can talk to those underlying issues. So I'll tell you, dentists hate a couple of things that I just know from like, you know, like lots of our mastermind members. One of the things dentists hate is they have neck and back pain all fucking day long from doing this, staring into people's mouths. So if you just show up to a dentist and say, I'm going to bring you more patients, that does not sound like a good offer to a dentist because that just sounds like more neck and back pain. So if you pitch to them, I understand you have neck and back pain, so I want to bring you higher value work so you can actually do less dentisting and more of the money-making thing, right? Because if he does three checkups back-to-back for $99 and he has overhead, he makes nothing almost from that. If he does one set of veneers and makes $30,000, he doesn't need to do nearly as many uh, checkups, doesn't need to see nearly as many people. So part of the benefit you're selling them is doing less dentisting. Another thing they hate is when they have a hygienist and the hygienist has no work. So uh, if you can help them fill their hygienist chair with work, that's something that, uh, because, you know, they pay the hygienist whether or not somebody's there uh, making money or not. And then another thing dentists hate, by the way, is that they have shit tons of overhead, right? There's an office, there's insurance. There's like, it's, it's an expensive business to start. Like you can't just start it with zero dollars and get into the dentisting thing. So they often have massive amounts of debt and bills. And so anything that helps them eat away at their cash flow issues will be exciting. So you, the more you can talk to like, their real world stuff that they're dealing with, the more you're going to have success with it. So I'm not saying they wouldn't like, like a pamphlet veneers, but that's again, selling the plane ride, right? It's selling the, the thing I'm going to build for you to get you to the, the destination. But the more you can talk to like, Hey, I know a lot of you guys have crazy overhead, neck and back pain. And, um, you know, you got hygienists, you got to keep busy. I've come up with a way just using the patients you've already got to fill those with veneer patients. So you can do less of the hard working, you know, backbreaking kind of $99 checkups. Would you be interested in checking that out? I bet you you'd get more responses. The more you can pin it around a present day thing that they're experiencing every day, like every day, the dentist neck and back hurts every day. 
So veneers sound cool, but like it, I've talked about this a lot uh, in our masterminds, but future gain is not going to sell as well as let me alleviate something that's happening for you right now. When you really nail it, you'll nail both of those things. You'll help them alleviate a present pain and get some future gain. But if you're only selling future gain, like you'll get a veneer patient tomorrow, it's going to be harder for you. Um, so you want to think about that when approaching. I hope that's helpful to you. All right, our man Solomon, who I think is live with us. I'm thinking of going into social media management field. Here's why. Already good at graphic design, so can handle that, and also familiar with main social platforms. And I see graphics current agencies makes are, ve are very basic and poor. But the thing is, I'm not sure how to offer it. Like, what outcome can I pitch? Is it leads, awareness, or maybe sales? If I talk about your industry, the lawyers you're working with, are they currently running their social profiles? Do they value it? Well, Solomon, you're kind of hinting at the solution a little bit, which is the first thing is, Okay, it's not really about graphic design. Graphic design is what we've been talking about on this live. Graphic design is a plane ride. It is a hammer. It is a tool, right? Like people can use graphic design to make a restaurant menu. They can use it to make a billboard that goes in Times Square, like a digital billboard that says my company. And by the way, those applications of graphic design are not going to be equal. A restaurant menu for a little mom and pop restaurant, even though it's the same basic delivery, you're not going to make nearly as much money as that is if you're making a billboard that's going in Times Square and is really, really important to the success of that company. So the first clue is before you can offer graphic design, you have to have a clear picture of who you want to offer it for, right? So like, in other words, a niche, right? And, and you've hinted a little bit at like agency owners. I can tell you as agency owners, probably the lowest hanging fruit for agency owners is there's a lot of agency owners who need ongoing graphics for Facebook ads. Right, like, and there's people like me who hate making them. Although there are some tools like Canva and stuff that make it a lot easier to make. Um, but that's the first thing is like people who just don't want to do that. Like, and and again, we've talked about like alleviating a present day problem. Like, there's a lot of people like me who just hate making them. Like, I, you know, I know lots of people who are like that. We don't run a ton of like Facebook ads anymore and like test all those those angles. But when we used to, like, we needed just a shitload of graphics to keep up with that. I guarantee you, there are some agencies. So you may want to consider that niche. That is one possibility. But the biggest thing you want to get clear after you get a niche is not what you do because again that is a hammer that is a plane ride but like thinking about the plane ride what do they not like about the office now and where are they trying to go so if we let's just say you chose the niche of agency owners and you can choose it with a different niche but i'll tell you they simply fucking hate making graphics like i didn't get into uh, like I'll tell you, when I got into running an agency, I wanted to make a cool living from a laptop where I could live anywhere in the world, uh, have happy clients. I didn't want to stare at a fucking ad manager. I didn't want to like, you know, have to design graphics. I didn't want to be like learning Photoshop. Like all of those things sound fucking terrible to me, and they also sound terrible to a lot of other agency owners. So that would be like metaphorically the office, right? So you gotta have a clear thing of like what they don't like about doing their graphics now. And then you want to think about where are they trying to go? Where is the beach? Where is the bikini babes? Where is the beer? Where is the sunshine, right? And in the case of a lot of agency owners is they just want Facebook ads that fucking work, right? And I'll tell you, there's some principles that make them work. So if you can help them go from like, hey, let me just take all this ad management design crap off your plate and make it so you can just have ads that work with somebody you trust you'll be able to get clients like that and the same is true in other niches so i'm not trying to steer you through to and tell you one niche is better than another there's pros and cons to every niche but there's somebody in every niche making it work so the question it should be the most fun for you but you want to think about not about i do graphic design but what are people building with graphic design and why do they want that graphic design in the first place? Like, what, are they, what kind of work are they trying to get off their plate that they don't want to do? And often you'll find it's just not their core specialty service, right? Like, I can make websites. I know how to make Facebook images. I don't fucking want to, right? Like, I want somebody else professional who can take that off of my plate. So that's the most likely application of your work. Um, hope that's helpful to you. Philip. For those of you who don't offer exclusivity, how do you respond to clients when they have concerns about you working with other clients in their area? We offer PPC services and offering exclusivity with severely limited our growth potential. I'll tell you two things you want to think about, Philip, because I've, I've competed against myself, especially in SEO in local markets. One is if they do exactly the same thing, I actually would not do it. 
because you'll find that at some point you're competing against yourself. I've experienced this many times in SEO and it gets hard because you're trying to get backlinks from the same sites and the same sources and things like that. And it can be a challenge where I would be okay with it personally is if, if they're like restauranty things, like they're, they're just in a little bit of a different niche. Like, so if you have a Chinese restaurant and uh, an Italian restaurant, then they're not really competing because, you know, Somebody, when they feel like going for Chinese food, they're going to go for Chinese food. When they feel like going for Italian, they're going to go for Italian. So I would tell you as a general rule, rule, I know you can make more money, like obviously selling more clients in more areas, but I'll tell you it's not fun to compete with yourself and you'll actually cut into your own results. So I would avoid that if possible unless where the niches kind of overlap. That's kind of my thoughts. But as far as selling it to a client, I just tell them the truth. Like, you know, we may compete against ourselves a little bit or, or hey, like you, the, my other client runs an Italian restaurant, your Chinese food, like different people are coming to you for different reasons. It's not really an issue. Like, and then they'll, they'll, you know, be cool with it. Um, Radu, does anyone here offer results guarantees for their services? Radu, it depends how far along you are in the journey. Um, usually if you got clients, especially if they're in niches where they're risk averse, I'll tell you who's really risk averse in my experience professional services, doctors, lawyers, accountants, dentists, they, they generally are, they're dentists, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're accountants. They don't, they don't want to like get into this marketing thing. They don't want to take on a lot of risk as a general rule. So a lot of times those people will be afraid of doing like spending money and making a mistake. So I'll tell you risk reversal helps a lot in those niches, especially if it's a small, short deliverable, like you know, if it's a, if it's a year long SEO, it may not be so powerful, but if it's like, Hey, we got this 90 day thing. And if it doesn't work out, I'll guarantee you that. Um, but I'll tell you the best guarantee I've ever made is not money back guarantees is results guarantees. Like we'll get you this result or we will keep working with you until we get this result. That has actually been the most powerful. So obviously you want to pick and choose and make sure you, you like choose clients. You can deliver those results for, uh, yeah, exactly. Mortgage pros, cold, they're the same kind of like, you know, risk averse kind of crowds. Um, so in those cases, like offering a results guarantee will actually get you farther than I'll give you your money back guarantee. And I'll tell you what sucks about money back guarantees is I've actually had people like two years later say, um, you know, I'm kind of low on cash flow. Any chance you could give me a refund for that thing like two years ago? You're like, what? <laughs> you know, like we already delivered that and you were happy with it then. And so if you're not careful, they'll, they'll go after you for the refund like a long time after the fact. Um, results guarantees, like most people just actually, if you gave them a choice between the money or the result and you do it right, most of them would rather have the result anyway. So you might as well aim for the result. Um, Val says, I'm four weeks into a Facebook marketing program that is trying to target very high earners. So far, we're attracting the opposite, very broke people. Could this just be an issue of the new pixel needing maturation time, or would you attribute this to a different problem since we're at the four week mark? Val, I'm going to tell you, it is so, so easy when things aren't working to look at the technology. Is it the pixel? Is it the targeting? And very rarely in my experience, is it those things? Okay. So this is the key right here, the finger pointer, the symptom. And almost always, if you're getting broke people, like I'll tell you a little story, okay? Like that kind of illustrates this. I was a little kid and we went up north in northern Canada to like somewhere in the middle of nowhere and there was this tiny little general store and I went with my dad and my brother and one of his friends. Uh, my dad was like an alcoholic and we didn't hang out very much. I didn't see him a lot growing up, but that was one of the times we had a cool experience together. And uh, we went out fishing that day and while we were at the general store, they sell like worms and bait, like things like that. And everybody bought the same bait and there was another kind of bait at the store. And I just, I don't know, I just, something about it appealed to me. I wanted this other kind of bait. So it was a little more expensive. My dad begrudgingly bought me this different kind of bait. We all went fishing that day. And what ended up happening was, by the way, the three of them, my brother, my dad, and his friend caught zero fish combined. And for some reason, I caught seven fish that day. It was a very busy day. I've never fished in my life before that point, but I caught seven fish. And almost always, if broke people are showing up, you are fishing with broke people bait. I'll give you an example, okay? If I run an ad on Facebook that says, hey, do you need more clients, okay? Or do you need any clients at all? Are you, are you struggling to, to keep the phone ringing at all and things like that? 
Well, who's struggling to keep the phone ringing? Broke people, right? So that's broke people bait. Now, if I run the same kind of ad, but it says, hey, are you a TV lawyer who's finding now that your TV, ca- or it's costing you more than $1,000 per signed case on TV, I'm going to get a TV lawyer. I won't get a ton of people, but the people who respond to that will be TV lawyers. So almost always, the symptom you're using is like bait um, for who you want to attract. And I see this in the agency space because I, I kind of, I get people at all levels. So I have like some people in my masterminds that are dealing with like scaling massive teams and breaking into other niches and they're they're having hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and cash flow issues. And I also have people who are like, I'm just trying to get my first client. The ad or the, the thing to attract both of those people is very, very different, right? So like, for example, if I talk about getting virtual assistance, then usually I'm talking to somebody who's at the end of stage one, trying to bring in virtual assistance. If I talk about the problems of having virtual assistance, then I'm going to talk to somebody who's at like stage two in an agency who has a small team. If I talk about the management challenges and managing KPIs and things like that, I'm going to get somebody who's at the management level. So almost always, it's ain't your pixels, my thing. I always, people always want to point the finger at the pixel. It's not the fucking pixel. You're almost like guaranteed to be using broke people bait and then broke people are showing up. What I would do is like, Look at it. Look at your ad and say, how is this speaking to broke people? Like, I had a client who came to me and her ads originally were something like, are you struggling to pay your bills? Are you, you know, do you need like kind of like a miracle to, to make it in this business? Well, who responds to that? Broke fucking people. And I'll give you a secret, by the way. Broke people value money the most because they ain't got it. So you'll see this in the form of people who drive like 50 miles to save five dollars they'll spend like fifty dollars in gas to save five dollars because something's on sale successful people with money tend to value solutions that save them time and energy so the more you talk about how your what you're doing is going to save them time and energy that is a secret way to bring in people who got money and avoid kind of intentionally the broke people um would like your words, okay, the last one we got here, Solomon says, would like your words on the social media management industry, what's working in it. Um, Solomon, I'm gonna send you a, a training we got in the uh, on the YouTube channel. It's called Dramatic Demonstrations. If you understand just this one training, then everything you do, graphic design-wise, in any industry, by the way, not just social media, will be exponentially more powerful because you'll understand how to create graphics that actually generate sales that generate interest that generate like real business and that is like a a, like a real hidden art and i'll tell you i uh for years on facebook ads i tried fucking everything like for real like i can remember like a year and a half where i tried cats and dogs i could have a lawyer a pretend lawyer dog with a briefcase and a suit on and um we got a phone alarm here it means i got a call coming up in just a minute um and uh and I just tried everything and I learned that a lot of the images that actually generate sales are not the flashiest. They're not the ones that get the most likes. They're not the ones that generate the most interest, but they generate the most cash dollars. And if you understand that, you can create images and uh, the training's about 20 minutes long, 25 minutes long or something like that. But I'm gonna send it to you because if you check that out, you'll whatever niche you choose to get into, you'll become more valuable because understand it's everybody wants the, the the latest little trick and hack, but I'll tell you what I've found is that is the lo- the wrong place to focus in my experience. What you want to focus on the th- are the things that never fucking change. And I'll tell you how I experienced this. So I was in SEO for a lot of years, and my first SEO agency, I got really good at using a tool called SE Nuke. I kind of rocked SE Nuke for like two three years. I would put in these big, really highly spun articles that would output like very. Uh, good English readable articles and then they would build these big backlink structures and it would automate a lot of the posting for that and I would rank websites with it and people's businesses would blow up as a result of those rankings. Then one day, Google did an update and SE Nuke lost like 40% of his capability and some of my clients lost ranking and then another six months later they did another update and SE Nuke was basically useless. And I spent like years and years using this tool and just like overnight it like it no longer made sense to to have it. People still paid for it, but it like it literally just didn't work from one update to the next. And the longer I became uh, did this, I became interested in the things that never change. Because when everybody's like looking for that next latest thing, I see this all the time. They go into a market 
where it's new and it's open. I see that a lot right now with TikTok ads. That's the exciting thing. So all these people get into TikTok ads. And I saw this like eight years ago with Facebook ads. And everybody became a Facebook ads expert. And then the market becomes saturated and nobody fucking wants it anymore. And whole thing is like basically a, a, like it's way harder to sell Facebook ads than it was eight years ago. The same thing will happen to TikTok. So what I'm always interested in are the things that are never changed. And if you understand the dramatic demonstrations for graphic design, you will never work very hard for business because you'll be able to generate graphics that generate business and you will be in demand and people will want you because people don't want cat photos as much as they think. They want the result of the cat photos, which is somebody to call them up and say, I'd love to give you some money. So I hope that's helpful to you, Solomon. Um, but I would not get hung up in what the latest trend is. I would get hung up in like, what's the thing that are never going to change. And then just finally, since that's the last question, just a reminder for those of you guys who are interested, I would check out, go to uh, the YouTube channel. I'll post a link below, but there's a training called Dramatic Demonstrations. A couple of my mastermind members have said, I can't believe this shit is free. This is the, the coolest shit you've ever shown. I've, I've sent a few people to it, watched it a few times myself. I uh, just like to remind myself because it's that powerful. It's like, it's like taking your sales message and making it connect home in like three or four seconds where somebody wants to buy your shit with one image. And if you can do that, um, like, I, you know, like the whole thing just gets a lot easier as far as like, you can walk into any niche. You can do it in TikTok. You can do it in Instagram. You can do it on LinkedIn. You can do it for an agency. You can do it for a restaurant. It doesn't really matter. The, the point is the same. It'll work anywhere because it works on people. And so you want to focus on the things that work on people. And that is like, in my opinion, the most useful application of your skill. And then also, so if you haven't seen that training, check that out. As I mentioned, if you guys are at the stage where you're five plus clients to 15, ideally, and you're looking to scale and you want to do it without phone calls, you want to do it without meetings, you want to bring in teams, you want to have a great system and deliver a wow client experience at scale, automated, that's what we do here in our mastermind. So reach out to that. And then as well, um, for those of you guys who are getting in Go High Level, we put some Really, really cool templates. So if you're interested in that, shoot me a message and I'll send you some details on that. Lior is here. I'm hoping to see you. By the way, we had an awesome Saturday night. It was awesome. I didn't get to quite say goodbye to you, Lior, because my kids are fuckers. But it was awesome seeing you. And uh, that's all I got for you guys. May the force be with you. And I'll post the replay of this on Facebook as, or on YouTube as always. Take care, guys.